Hello, hello, hello everyone. This is Lori Mueller coming to you on Sunday for our weekly Stampin' or Sunday Stampin' Dreams uh, stamping session. And I am super excited to share this project with you. I know that Christmas is literally just around the corner. I don't know how that's happened, considering everything that's been going on in this year, that uh, December is almost a quarter of the way done, and it is that uh, precious moment where time is gonna fly, even though we are probably not all traveling near as much or near in the rush of getting to work and back and everything. But uh, nonetheless, you still have probably some coworkers, you still have teachers to thank, you still have um, daycare providers, uh, grandparents, parents, you name it. Uh, it's There's always a wonderful person in your life that is going to uh, need a little extra something something for um, uh, whatever it is they do for you. And treat packaging is the easiest um, thing to kind of put together. Uh, not always, you know, about decorating it and everything, but stamping up. One thing that uh, they really do well with is providing a number of different packaging mediums. There are a number of sizes of our acetate boxes. There is the mini pizza box. There is the mini paper pumpkin box. There are gusseted bags. And then plus you've got designer series paper and cardstock with the little um, treat die that you can make little boxes with. Um, or you can use your simply scoring tool to create a fun, uh, decorated box as well and you can put handles on it you don't have to put handles on it um, put belly bands on it just I mean your dreams can come alive when it comes to treat packaging and you can fill it with post-it notes and chocolates and um, jewelry or little trinkets little pairs of socks gloves you name it and uh, then you've got a nice simple gift that is going to be a wow factor for your recipients and something that they are going to love and cherish and probably put it on display for a while um, so that's what we're gonna do today I have um, the three and an eighth inch square acetate boxes and they are perfect for putting, I mean, they're a good size. Uh, not only can you make little three by three note cards with the envelopes, um, but they are perfect for um, a huge, I mean, a huge York peppermint patty and, um, and a post-it note. So we're gonna have some fun putting that together today. But first of all, hello everyone. So, well, uh, so happy to have you here. It's good to see you back. Uh, spending your Sunday afternoon with me. And I am super excited to share a wonderful uh, idea for any recipient that you uh, want to show appreciation to. So, but first off, there are a couple of announcements that I want to share with you. First is a huge, I mean a giant year-end closeout that Stampin' Up! is offering on Tuesday, December 8th. And it'll go all the way through January 4th. Um, and uh, there's a number of items in the current mini catalog that are going to be retired. And some of them are reduced up to, I saw 50%. I think there might have been a 60% off. But anyway, some of them are 10%, 20%, 30 40 50 60 and so if there's something that you really, really want to get, you've had your eye on, then I highly suggest that you uh, purchase it earlier versus later because it is while supplies last. Um, the other thing too is that due to the holidays and more people are at home and having to use the postal services, it is estimated that there could be a little bog 
uh, with the delivery. So Stampin' Up! is indicating uh, that it would be probably in your best interest to place any orders uh, by the 10th just to be on the on the ultimate safe side that you will get it long before Christmas. So if you have a special someone that you are purchasing a gift for and you want to wrap it up and tuck it under the tree for them, I would kind of focus around the 10th. Now, you know, give or take a few days, um, I'm certain everything will still go as planned, but just to be safe, you might want to um, get your little notepad out, your wish list and pen and, and discover what it is that you want to get from the year end closeout. Um, I know there are some kits on there that are 50% off. Uh, there are a number of things that I'm actually gonna kind of stock up on as well because with craft fairs, I like to use um, some of the seasonal items for uh, creating um, items to sell at a craft fair. So kind of think that about that as well. Second of all, with this comes the new mini, the January through June mini catalog. We used to call it the occasions catalog and celebration. Celebration! It starts in January, January 4th. Everything starts with the new mini catalog. Now I have already placed my order for my catalogs and if you have made a purchase with me in the last six months, you are already on my VIP list. You will um, automatically have one mailed to you. And that includes all of my um, customers who shop through my online store, my Paper Pumpkin subscribers, and um, anybody who has been part of my online ordering club, my In Color Clubs. Um, so you are already on my list. Now, if you wanna get on my list, and would like to get your hands on my little care package because my catalogs don't come all by themselves. I love to create and tuck in a beautiful little surprise that is um, going to fancy your sweet tooth maybe. But uh, so anyway, if you wanna get on my uh, mailing list, please place an order and it can be any size, doesn't have to be any minimum of any sorts, and then your name will appear on my list as well. So um, I expect my catalogs to come, I think later this week, and I am gonna be busy, busy, busy getting them all put together, packaged, and out in the mail. The other thing too, if you would, um, if you have been placing an order with me, uh, in the last six months. If you could check your profile just to make certain that your address is up to date. You know, I know a number of people have moved and I just wanna make certain that your catalog arrives in a timely manner, so. So on that note, how about we get started with our project for today? So let's flip it over. And just as a note, this is let me see if I can. This is the year in closeout, and it is um, set for December 8th through January 4th, but it is also while supplies last. So, if, like I said, if there's something that you really want to get your hands on, you want to make certain that you don't delay until January 3rd because it could be out long before that time. All right, and then next up is our catalogs. So this is the new mini, and this is its little baby, Celebration. Now, Celebration is um, two months, January and February, and that's where you earn free products with every $50 purchase. And then there's also other specials that go along with Celebration, but look at how pretty it is. Oh my gosh, it is just, I mean, oh, yum, yum. It's kind of like cotton candy, but it got a little vintage feel to it as well. So, all right. So today I am going to work with the poinsettia petals again. I just love this bundle. Uh, you get a photopolymer set. There's two of them, you know, to hold all of those images because there's 18 images in this set. And then here are all of the dyes, leaves and poinsettias and uh, little holly berries. Um, 
you name it there's a ton of dies in there as well and that's what I am going to focus on using for our project as I had mentioned earlier our um, catalog is filled with a number of items that you can fill with whatever it doesn't have to be chocolates it can be you know like I said post-it notes it can be a pair of socks a little mittens um, you name it and these are nice and sturdy they aren't um, you know cracking or you know warping um, you know they're not flimsy let's just say that they're not flimsy and I am uh, you can also put food in here such as a little cookie if you wanted to wrap a cookie in there and give as a gift but you get uh, 10 of them in a package they're uh, six dollars for 10 of them and so it ends up being 60 cents per little box and so these measure three and an eighth inch square that you know if you wanted to design four you know three or four three by three note cards along with the envelopes those would fit in here beautifully um, but I'm going to share a project that is not um, necessarily for um, you know handing out uh, you might want to just keep it all to yourself so all right here is my little project look at that isn't that beautiful and I'm using the um, poinsettia uh, place designer series paper and this is also part of the designer series paper even though you can stamp one of your own and then die cut it it does have a coordinating die right here and then I've got a, a huge um, light bulb uh, idea for you using this die okay then I am using this is the reverse side there's a wood grain in that collection of designer series paper now these items the leaves and these berries were stamped and die cut the sentiment comes from the stamp set as well and it was heat embossed with white on old olive here is the uh, shine um, it's sheer ribbon the real red sheer ribbon and then I use some pine cones from one of the uh, papers actually from this side of the paper and then another strip of that and then inside I put in two of the three by three um, post-it notes now you wouldn't have to put two in there if you wanted but for me it was um, nice and sturdy to put in there for uh, assembling my uh, project so I'm gonna leave those in there but we're gonna do a little bit some uh, something different on the one we're going to make next and then it just snaps right in there like that super super cool and then I've got that one raised and um, the poinsettia is raised and then a little bit to kind of hold up on this end because that one is adhered to the flower so super cute so I have um, the supplies to create this next project and one of them would be the acetate box which we can go ahead everything's already uh, scored for you and you would just uh, give it a nice little bend you don't have to do too much bending with it and then snap it in there just like you do you know any other box that you see um, like that and then you put in the flaps here and again I'm gonna give it a little bit of a bend right there and a bend right there and voila that's your box now with this one though I have decided to fill it with one of these York peppermint patties and then I found these uh, post-it notes you can get three of them in a package and I'll just take the top one off of there and I'm going to tuck it behind the York peppermint patty and fit it in there just like that see how nifty that fits just like that 
How fun is that? I love these big York peppermint patties. I can't get enough York peppermint patties. They're just yummy, yummy, yummy. All right, so we've already got our packaging stuffed. Next up is to um, get our supplies. And I'm using this designer series paper. This is on one side and this is on the other. This is again from the Poinsettia um, Place designer series paper. I've already die cut this pattern. I thought the pine cones would really go well with the um, like the evergreen boughs versus you know the wood grain that I thought was a nice complement to this pattern. Uh, now you could intermix like that. It would look good that way too. But I thought these kind of coordinated naturally together. We are going to need some shaded spruce for our leaves, some vellum for the holly berries. This is old olive for our sentiment. And then I've already cut out some of these little sprigs with uh, bumblebee cardstock. And I think that's about it with exception. Oh, and then we're gonna need some of the sheer red ribbon. And I believe it measures, let me, um, it's about 13, 14 inches long. So, and you can adjust it however you like. Now I'm gonna set these aside because I wanna show you how <laughs> this comes into play. This is one of the designer papers or one of the patterns that comes in that pack. And I, instead of, like I said, instead of stamping this particular one, I thought, oh, I'm just gonna kind of cheat and I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut one of these out. You know, so I hand cut one out and then I got to looking at this one and it's like, okay, you've got to be kidding me. It fits. So the die actually will die cut this particular flower, this uh, particular poinsettia out. Now, of course, this won't fit all of them. It just fits this one, and then there's more that are also on this page. So I am going to, for this next project, die cut it out of here. So I'm going to need to kind of, because um, I want to use this uh, pine cone, so I'm just gonna come in here and kind of do that number. And I can just give myself a little bit of a gap among everything else because my die is going to hug the border of the flower or the poinsettia. It is a flower, right? <laughs> so I gotta feel bad that I'm calling it a flower when Maybe it isn't, but it is a flower, right? All right, so we've got this ready to go. And just to make certain I have this. Yeah, it'll, whoops. Nope, right there. It'll be like that one. All right, so the next thing I want to do, because I'm going to need to die cut my little holly berries, I need to stamp them first. So I'm gonna bring in, this is the filler, it is a two-step. So this berry right here is the outline, and then you can color it in using your watercolor pencils or our Stampin' Blends, or you can use the water, um, the water painter brushes, um, or you can cheat and just use the two-step stamping, which is this image right there. All right, and I'm gonna cheat today. <laughs> so <laughs> let's get, um, I'm using soft suede as my outline for this image. Crumb cake was just too light of a color and early espresso was just too dark. So I'm kind of going in the middle. It's kind of like um, uh, the three bears, <laughs> you know, porridge hot, porridge cold. Porridge is just right. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna get this in here like that. 
Now the one thing about vellum, you do want to give it some time to dry. It's not as porous as our Whisper White or our other cardstock. So it will kind of set on top of the vellum for just a little bit longer than normal. So I like to, oh, I need my soft suede out. So I'm gonna set that aside before I put in my filler of Real Red. So in the meantime, why don't we go ahead and ink up our leaves, or the one leaf actually, and I'm using soft suede again. Instead of shaded spruce on shaded spruce, I'm gonna give it a little bit of a two-tone color uh, and actually it's really not even noticeable. So I'm gonna give us three leaves. I hope everyone's doing okay today, having a great day. It's kind of gloomy, really chilly today, but um, it's a nice day to stay inside and stamp. So, and that's what I'm gonna do today. And I, I assume since you're watching me, well, maybe you're on the road too. <laughs> you're also indoors. All right, so that one is ready to die cut. Now, if you were with me last week, you uh, remember, or maybe, <laughs> I know my memory gets really short too, how I gave a tip of keeping this a consistent die uh, without having to worry about you know, evening it out every time you went to die cut. I just used um, some of that... Uh, uh, it's like cling wrap. Now I've forgotten the name of it, but um, it just helps, you know, so that you can pick it up and then move on to the next one. Well, with these leaves, I don't need this center part. So I'm going to go ahead and take that part out and, you know, it'll restick again later because all I need is just that piece. Um, this part is in the embossed uh section of it but there's more veins in this leaf than there are uh, in this particular part of the die so I will not need that center part and I'll just be setting it up like that all right so now that I've kind of chatted that away I think my soft suede should be dry enough that I can ink up my real red now I need to all right get my bearings on on point here for the real red and I'm just going to fill in Let's see if I can eyeball this well I might be a little bit off but that's okay there we go and then I'll come around and do this one gives it a kind of an abstract There we go. And voila. All right, so those are our holly berries. Put that away. And we got that all done. All right, so um, next up is to go ahead and die cut this piece. I can set that aside. Bring in my stamp and cut and emboss machine and we're gonna have to cut several of these leaves that's the one part that I forgot to do ahead of time was to at least cut a couple of these but we can also die cut our berries at the same time or at least one of them at a time and I'm gonna do this one I can see that one's just a Maybe I'll let it dry just a, a little bit more because the ink will transfer to the plate and I want to show you uh, what it does if you don't let it dry and then you forget to wipe down <laughs> your plate before moving on to the next one. So, oh, look how easy, so pretty. I love that shaded spruce. It is such a nice rich green outside of garden green. Um, that one, 
I don't know, it's been around for a while. It's still a great green, don't get me wrong. But this one has a little bit more richness to it that I am attracted to these days. All right, and I think I can go ahead and put this one in there. Now the stem, I just have to make certain it's down the center of the die. Ah. Whoops. Here we go. And just carefully lay it on top so nothing moves. Sometimes static cling will be on that top plate and want to move it before you even get really super close to the... All right, so there's leaf number two. Now, here is where, I don't know if you can see it or not, but there is a little bit of red ink in there. So I'm going to wipe that off because what it will do, can you see the red splotches right here? This is what happened. I didn't let it dry enough, and then I went to die cut this after die cutting my berries, and that red ink from the plate transferred to my cardstock. So... So that's the importance of kind of letting it dry. You can use your heat tool or, you know, if you have other steps to your project, you can go ahead and do them first and then let the ink dry naturally on vellum. All right, do that one. And we have one more leaf. So we'll go ahead and arrange that. I love that this machine is big enough to allow you to die cut more than one item at a time and I also to make it a point oh come on to rotate my plate as I mean every time I flip it upside down uh, flip it over top to bottom you know just to ke help keep my plate always in a flat and not a bowed um, scenario. So you can see that, oh, all right, so my die went down there. Nice that I can, I'm able to pull that out safely. But otherwise my die, or my plate is nice and straight, and that's because I'm constantly rotating it. So you wanna keep, Keep that in mind if you're doing a lot, a lot of die cutting. And then also, too, make certain your dies are not always in the center. Think of it as um, your bed or even a couch. If you sit in it, sleep on it, you know, over a period of time, you're going to build a well in there. And, um, yeah, you can rotate your mattress, but you can't really rotate a couch. But that's what happens with... Um, this as well that you want to kind of rotate your dies so that they're not always stuck in the center of the platform all right so we are done with all of our stamping and die cutting as far as this is concerned oh, that did move on me a little bit but that's okay most of it will be hidden behind the decoration anyway all right. Oh, I needed to die cut my poinsettia. Totally, totally forgot. All right, so I'm going to have to remember, wipe down my plate, and I'll just use my trusty jeans. <laughs> I learned that trick from a friend of mine. Um, she comes over here uh, for stamp class when I was having home in-person classes, and... The first time I saw her wipe a stamp, I mean, it had just been inked, just been stamped, and then instead of using the uh, chamois or the uh, scrubber, she used her jeans. <laughs> I was like, ah, you're going to get ink all over. And she goes, ah, oh, that's okay. These are my stamping jeans. <laughs> I was like, okay. So who else does that? I, um, I don't know. I guess I'm a little nervous about getting a lot of ink but you know she had dark jeans on so it didn't really show so and that's what her whole point was she goes you can't see it 
So, thought it was just panic attack at that moment. So, see how that worked out? And then you get a little bit of a border all the way around the flower. And voila, it's all done for you. All right, so I... Yep, I don't have any pine cones on there. All right, so next up is to start putting together the belly band for our little box. And this is where I recommend that, um, normally I would recommend a scoring tool, but um, it's not conducive to these measurements. And um, it just takes a lot more time to try and figure it all out versus just doing this little number. So you want to start, you know, I'm going to, I want my seam to be in the back. So that's why I'm starting out with my first piece with the seam in the back. I gave it a little bit of a mold for my crease that I will... Uh, reinforce with my bone folder and then I'm going to go ahead and do that here and do it again and I want to make certain it is kind of snug do that and one more and give it a nice little firm fold there now I can come in with my bone folder and give it a nice crisp um, edging versus a, a rounded off one. But at least it gives me an idea of where I need to burnish my folds. And also too, it allows me to line up my edges so that my folds are straight. Okay, like that. And then I got one more small one and like that voila all right now with this one we're gonna go ahead and let's see make certain I, I want the short end to be underneath and then on top is going to be my um, my longer piece all right and with this, you can use either your liquid glue or your Stampin' Seal. So I recommend that on the part that's going to be on the outside, you run it along the outside edge. And then with this one, I want to run it on the inside edge as well. Oop. What did it do? because that way I've got double enforcement with both edges. All right, so put this in there. Line that up just like that. And voila! Now, the one thing, now this isn't sliding as much as my first one did, but if you wanted, you could kind of slip this down a little bit and just put a little bit of a uh, Stampin' Seal right there just to make certain that it does not slip off. You don't have to as long as you are um, getting it snug enough and then just give it a little pressure and then you're, sh you know, it's certain not to come off of there. All right, and so I used Stampin' Seal Plus on this one. I think I'm almost certain you could use the Stampin' Seal or liquid glue Either one of those will work. Next up is the decorating of our focal points. So I'm just going to do this off the box right now. And I'm going to kind of line this up a little bit. Bring in my sprigs. And I decided to kind of cut these up a little bit. And get more bang for my buck with the... <laughs> with these, not that you know that matter, but I'm gonna go ahead and trim that off. So that way I can kind of disperse them throughout a little bit more sparingly because otherwise a lot of it gets buried underneath and I wanna see some of these berries out and about. All right, and I might trim this one down just a smidge too. 
All right, next I want to make certain I am positioning this where my sentiment is going to be um, kind of a focal point without covering a whole lot of this that I'm going to um, add in. So with my leaves, I did give them a little bit of a scrunch so I have some 3D effect going on. So I just, you know, with my fingers, kind of give it a little bit of a scrunch down the vein and up on the, the first one. So it gives it a little bit of uh, dimension and character. Then I am going to bring in my liquid glue because with this one I can actually maneuver and I also want to, it looks like the majority of my pine cones are going that. I don't know if it's even going to be obvious. So I'll do that. And I'm going to put a leaf right in there. Let's see. Oh, maybe I want to yeah, yeah, that works. I think that works. My sentiment right there. All right, and then add in one down here. Like that. And then bring in one here. So if you don't have this planted down, this is how I kind of get everything to kind of work. Let's see, we'll go like that yeah looking good all right so next up is to plug in my little berries and I think I'm going to plug this one down here and you can you know line these up however you like that's the whole joy of this whatever your eyes envision or your dreams. And we'll go ahead and put that up in there. See how quickly this is coming together? This is just way too much fun. And I think I had, and I, you know, you don't need a whole lot of liquid glue, just enough to plant it in place like that. That's all that's going to be held underneath. And then my dimensionals from the um, poinsettia are going to help enforce the rest of it. Let's see. I'm going to... Uh, let's do one of these big ones right here. And let's get it down here. Like that. Okay, it's looking good. I love it, love it, love it. Yeah, you know, none of these are ever going to come up the same, right? So um, that's the whole beauty of, of putting these things together. None of them are ever going to be the same. And if you're in a uh, craft fair, your customers almost appreciate that none of them look alike. Although, if they're only buying one, they may struggle trying to decide which one they really want. But that's just too fun of a problem, right? Let's see. I think I'm going to add a little bit. Oh, that there. Yeah. I'll come over here. Like that. There. Yoo-hoo! And I think, all right, so that's all of that. Now I can put my dimensionals on my flower, or my poinsettia. So I'll get the dimensionals out, and then we'll plant it on top of everything. And since everything is pretty thin, you know, the vellum and the cardstock, I'm not worried about um, placing these dimensionals. Usually I try to avoid bulky areas so that it doesn't pop up the um, the area that I don't want to be popped up. And I think I'm gonna 
go for a couple halves right there and then one in the center all righty so we're getting there it's looking gorgeous I don't know about you guys but I haven't even started my Christmas shopping I keep asking my daughters what they want for Christmas but the older they get it the harder it is to um, pull it out of their brain you know when they were kids that you know they'd you know scream at me with five six or a dozen different ideas of what they wanted you know it's like I want Santa to bring this but now I can't even get them to tell me one thing you know I think they're just so used to getting what they want when they want it so you know that's what adults do right so now I am going to um, affix the ribbon with some glue dots and I just like to randomly lay them along this area and see if I land on any of them after I've arranged it. All right, so like this and like that. Ooh, that looks good. And plant it evenly. I might go a little bit heavier on the tails and not as heavy on the bow area so let's and the one thing about this ribbon you can just pick up and and reposition it because it's really nice and thin but yet um, flexible to all right I need one right there even yeah looks good okay now I can put some dimensionals on the back of this little arrangement and plant it in the center and knowing there we go Now with the wood grain, I was more conscientious to make certain that it was going up and up and down, or you know, if you want it to go side to side, just because that's the natural flow of a wood grain. Now this one, because it's pine cones, there's not that you know much of a hindrance to position it just right. So and I centered my stitched circle. Um, this is from the layering. Um, the stitched oval circles and then you got squares on the back um, so I used the largest stitched circle for this piece and oh looking good I love it love it love it all right so now we have left is um, inking up our sentiment and I have my little embossing buddy now if you don't have an embossing buddy um, you'll have to you can you know if you have like an old sock you could put some flour or baking soda or something in there and it's about the same thing and I'm going to use Versamark and I have my white embossing powder and then I'm gonna have my heat gun here in just a second so let's ink up the sentiment and we're doing happy holidays again and you kinda of wanna go all give it some nice good inking and center it up and down left and right All right, let's see how I did. Ooh, oh, not too bad. There we go. And see, and the embossing buddy helps eliminate any sticking of this powder in other places that you don't want to have showing once it gets heated up because it'll be white then. All right, next I'm going to warm up my heat tool and get it ready for melting. Yay! I love this part. So I'm gonna 
watch this powder melt into a solid and it'll be raised see how it's white it's getting darker love 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 and then I like to kind of shoot from behind just to give it a little bit of even heat and then we're done next is to put it into place and I know it's gonna go there so I'm gonna need a dimensional about right there I'll use one of those and I'm gonna give it a little bit of adhesive on this end that's gonna be over top of my flower and position it like so make sure it's straight Lori there yay 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 and we are done done and one what do you think oh well you know what I'm gonna, I'm gonna trim this off just a smidgen so it's more even there we go that, yeah that's more even so what do you think isn't that adorable and like I said you can put a whole there's a whole slew of ideas that you can put inside there and it went together so easy and you know it's just like arranging a flower pot or um, a, a vase of flowers you know I'm not always that great at it but you know once it gets put together you're gonna get a lot of oohs and ahs from whoever stops by your home to um, visit you but you have to tell me which one do you like better do you like it with the the evergreen boughs and the pine cones or do you prefer this more subtle pattern or squirrely pattern with the wood grain you know put in a um and you know what i haven't given away um prize patrol in a while uh with all the comments today and if you share my uh, video today i will draw somebody's name um let's see i'll draw it before the next week and um and then announce it then so but yeah tell me which one you like best i just love it i mean you know either post-it notes or post-it notes and chocolate i'd probably take that one just because it's got the chocolate in there but <laughs> it's like, that's me that's just me all right so let's flip us around and you have to tell me what you think um on that i hope that you enjoyed it uh, the poinsettia petals, um, the whole bundle, all the papers, the ribbons, everything that comes with that suite is amazing. It is so much fun to play with. And um, you can create, you know, you can use, who says you can't use poinsettias for Mother's Day or a birthday? I mean, these, these would be perfect for um, those types of occasions as well. They wouldn't also, they wouldn't have to just be a Christmas present or a Christmas decoration. Uh, you can build it into another occasion as well. So I hope that you enjoyed this project. And if you are crafting and having some stamping fun to yourself today, share it here, share it with us. We could all use some inspiration and ideas, but also too, leave a comment and uh, let me know which one of these uh, two uh, treat packages that you prefer right or left and we'll, we'll just do it that way right or left and then also if you wouldn't mind sharing my video amongst your friends and groups um, so that I can uh, reach more people who maybe have never heard of uh, stamping and crafting and making your own um, paper projects because you know once once you find out about it, once you hear about it, once you start stamping, you're hooked. <laughs> it's like, well, I have been at least for, you know, a little over 12 years now. So, but anyway, thank you so much for joining me. I very, very much appreciate your time with me and your friendship. And I can't wait to see you until next week. Same time, same place, Stampin' Dreams on Sunday. So until then, have a great rest of your weekend and we will visit with you later. Bye.